Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Warwick in the UK. Now, I've not talked about books for quite a long time here on the channel. There's been a lot of other important content to make, but now the time has come to talk about another book. And today I have for you How to Draw Anatomy by Phil Malloy. Now, just a bit of disclosure to keep things consistent. You guys know that I always disclose where product samples and review codes and things like that come from. I was sent this copy for free for the purposes of review by Phil, the author. If you recall, we actually had Phil on the channel very recently talking about training as an anaesthetist and working on the COVID front lines. If you haven't seen my interview with Phil, please go ahead and check that out. It was really interesting. You guys know that I'm really, really interested in medical education, particularly anatomy education, because it's such a, a strange subject unto itself. So I'm always interested and kind of intrigued by any new means of tackling that problem. It's often quite difficult as a medical student to know exactly the depth of anatomy that you need to know. And it's this kind of classic problem from what I understand that's led Phil to put together this book. He himself has told me that he was a med student who struggled with anatomy and wanted to try and condense everything down to its most basic components. So you can see what we essentially have is a series of whiteboard tutorials which take the most relevant bits of anatomy for each bodily system and it essentially breaks it down into usually four or five distinct steps that you can draw with just a couple of coloured markers and give yourself the key bits of relevant anatomy. I think it's really important to address who this type of product is aimed at. To me, what this is, or the read that I get on this, no pun intended, is that it's intended for medical students who are perhaps very new to anatomy or struggling to remember the key bits of clinical anatomy that they need for their exams. What this obviously is not is a surgical anatomy reference textbook. It, it's not intended to be a similar sort of product to Gray's or Netter's or Abraham's and McMinn's, any of these standard anatomy tomes. That's not what this is. I think what this is fundamentally is more of a revision guide. And we can see something like that illustrated, again, no pun intended, really well with these clinical hot tips that we get on a lot of the diagrams, which beyond just giving you the diagram that you need, will give you the little clinical details that you need to remember to pass your exams. So I think let's stop wasting time. I'm just gonna try and draw out a couple of them from a couple of different systems and you can see quite how easy Phil makes it. What do we reckon, boys? Do we use slim or thick? Okay, let's do some draw. Oh no, how did that get there? God, how embarrassing. Only someone desperate for social media clout would do such a thing. Okay, right. Let's start with lungs. Some people seem to think they're quite important. More crucially, it requires minimum effort on my part. So here we are. Step one, draw the lungs. If I mess this up, that's going to be so incredibly embarrassing. Thankfully... Look at that, smashed it, doing great. And gotta add this mysterious Y-shaped structure. Can do that. Done that. Oh, and we've got some, some funny lines under here. I can do that. Big old ladder. Okay, cool. Then he has used green, but I'm a maverick, so I'm gonna use blue. Listen up, sheeple. Blue can be green. Now we're on to step three, we've got one line here, one line coming down here, then one big old line going there. I would say we've done a pretty good job. So there's a bit more going on here. We've got a trachea. I'm realizing very rapidly it would have been far smarter to start from the left hand side because I'm right handed. Cherry on the terrible cake. Superior. Right. Left. Lungs. Completed it mate. Oliver. Age. 24. Alright let's try another one. Problem though I always think with the lungs. Kind of weak, floppy, uninspiring. Passive exchange of gas. Bit pedestrian. What we need. Heart. Manly, pumping, T-waves, it's even got lad right in there. I think we could just leave it there, it's pretty good. Then we've got these kind of invisible plain line things going in the background. 
Then we're gonna get a chunky red boy. It's coming down the middle and there's a little bit coming off like that. And I quite like this, what Phil's done here. This dotted line indicates that there's a kind of posteriorly obscured structure. Well, I suppose it's anteriorly obscured by the anterior part, but you get what I'm getting at. And that's coming round to join that like that. Phil, you're trying to sell me on an extra step that isn't actually a step. Just in case I get lost, I'm gonna do the map or the compass first. Again, because I'm basically a cardiac surgeon already, gonna go ahead and use some abbreviations, except I don't know what the abbreviation for marginal is, so I'm just gonna write left marginal. I take issue with this. Who calls it the anterior interventricular artery? That is weak, we call it lad. Diagonal branch of lad. God, I forgot what the coronary arteries were called then. Oliver, age 24. Well done, lads. Now that was so easy and kind of fun in a way. I think that demonstrates the exact utility of a book like this. The interesting thing here is, if you were to ask me, as Ollie sat here now thinking about my med school finals, would I buy this book now at this point in medical school? Me personally, probably not. I've probably passed the point where this is useful for me only because I'm really interested in anatomy and more detail than this essentially. I'm not a person that finds anatomy really difficult to remember and needs a new way of remembering it for my exams. That's, that's not me as a student. That's why I tend to find more utility in, you know, 3D anatomy resources that I talk about all the time, things like netters and greys. However, were I to be shunted somehow back to my first year of medical school with very little knowledge of human anatomy at that time, would I have found something like this useful? Absolutely. For my pre-clinical exams, I would have found something like this indispensable. Because what this does, as all good exam preparation resources should do, is condense everything down to its most important bare bones components. The idea is obviously that you're remembering more or less everything in this book and you're able to draw out all these diagrams. That's not to say that it wouldn't be useful for clinical exams as well, because in the long cases that you can sometimes be asked to do as part of finals or further clinical exams, you might be asked to describe the anatomy of the gallbladder or the pancreatic duct or the vessels of the heart. You might have to explain them to a patient. So who is this going to be useful for? Ultimately, it's going to be medical students who are in the first few years of the course and are kind of new to everything and they want a good revision tool or you're an older medical student who finds anatomy more difficult to remember in terms of what you need for exams and passing spotters and things like that, then this will also be useful for you. I think the part of the market that it doesn't appeal to is unfortunately the one that I find myself in where we're all kind of wannabe surgeons and really interested in the anatomy anyway. But the other thing that I really like about this book fundamentally, and whoever you are, I would recommend buying it for this reason, is that this book represents a passion project, right? It's basically one guy, it's Phil, and I know this because I've confirmed it with him, who saw a genuine gap in the market for something. He himself was one of those people that found studying anatomy difficult. And he just kind of grafted and worked hard and developed a product that fills that gap in the market and does it very well. It's got the reviews to bear it out. And again, I know firsthand that Phil makes next to no money on these books. He does it because he enjoys it and he actively feels like it's helpful. And I think we can all identify with that on some level. So ultimately, do I endorse this product? Yes. Would I buy it for myself right now? No, probably not at this point. Would it have made a great gift for me when I started med school? Absolutely. Do I think the book achieves in a very spectacular way what it sets out to do? Yes, I do. I heartily recommend the book. So go out and buy it. I'll leave an Amazon referral link in the description below. And I think you can also get it as an ebook as well. And I'm a massive fan of ebooks. So go out and get whichever one suits you. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please make sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for my entire video library, more anatomy learning products like this one, and tips on getting into med school. Take care, and I'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching guys, there are three ways you can support the channel. The first one is to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend, just enjoy it generally. Second, is you can buy me a coffee if you found it useful using my Ko-Fi link which will help keep me awake during the editing process. And then thirdly, you can use my referral link to save 10% off your first year of Complete Anatomy 2020, my favourite 3D anatomy learning tool. Take care guys and I'll see you next time.